We've got the first ever mainstream three row EV with us, the 2024 Kia EV9. It has a starting MSRP of 54.9, and today we are gonna be taking a look around the mid-trim wind all-wheel drive. This is in ocean blue, and there is a really cool matte version of this blue um, in the trims above this guy. Powering the EV9, since this is an all-wheel drive, is dual motors, producing 379 horsepower and 433 pound-feet of torque. And Kia also offers an interesting pay-to-play service um, through Kia Digital Services that's gonna allow you to access 516 pound-feet of torque. Uh, that's gonna take your zero to 60 from 5.7 to five seconds flat. So almost a whole second shaved off uh, with that extra boost. Let's get into the fun stuff. Let's talk about charging. Your charge port door is located on the rear passenger side of the EV9. This wind all-wheel drive uh, can get you up to 280 miles of range depending on the driving conditions. And for some context, the trim below this, the light long range rear wheel drive can get up to 304 miles of driving range. Um, one fun fact about the wind all-wheel drive is that it comes with a heat pump to help preserve some of that range because heat equals power. So if you are charging on a level two charger at home, you can get from 10 to 100% in about eight hours. And if you come across a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger, you can get from 10 to 80% in about 83 minutes. And of course you also get region braking with the EV9 that's going to help you preserve more range. The EV9 also comes standard with a lot of driver assistance systems standard. Um, some of my favorite things on that list include blind spot collision avoidance assist. You have a navigation based smart cruise control with stop and go as well. Underneath the hood, you do have a frunk that you can access with your key fob or through um, a switch on your driver's side of the interior. It's pretty small, um, can definitely easily store like a level two charging cable in here if you get one, um, or maybe like a really fun place <laughs> for like snacks maybe. <laughs> Just nothing that would melt, I suppose. Uh, and then speaking of the key, it, the key is a uh, really nice style. It's just like minimal, white, clean. There's only buttons on the perimeter of the key. Um, and what I love about it is the Kia logo illuminates when you press a button. So it might be hard to see it right now, but it flashes green when you press a button. So, and it comes with this like nice leather strap attached to it. Um, and this is a spare key, by the way. You just pull that guy out. Almost looks like a thumb drive. So, Good styling. The EV9 has really futuristic styling with these cool sharp lines and very like bold substantial front end. LED projector headlights also come standard across all trims. Moving around to the side, you're gonna get 19 inch wheels on the wind all wheel drive trim. And then one thing to mention about this trim as well is you get almost an inch more of ground clearance compared to the two trims below it. So uh, for a total of 7.8 inches of ground clearance. Um, as you may have noticed, you also get heated power mirrors that have turn signal indications um, on both sides here including your little blind spot warning right there on that guy. Also exclusive um, or a new add-on to the wind trim will be uh, roof rails. I also love the design of the retractable door handles um, on the front and back and the way that they slip away seamlessly when your door is locked. Also when you're in drive, your door handles tuck away. The back continues with that really cool futuristic style seen in the LED taillights, this really fun, quirky little design shape. You also get a nice rear spoiler back here with my favorite part, you do have a windshield wiper tucked away, completely invisible, um, rather than like right here, clunky looking. Love it when they tuck that away. Standard on the EV9 is a remote lift gate, which is a solid feature to have come standard. And you get so much space back here and some other really cool features. So 
My favorite things are one, it's really easy to fold down your second row with this little pulley here. Just snap that back. It's also really easy to fold down your second row. In the wind trim, you will also have power folding second row. It only folds down, they don't fold back up. And then another really cool feature back here is a vehicle to load charging um, situation. So you have a 110 volt outlet back here. So think about things to power like a, an electric pump for an air mattress, or you can charge your laptop, or you could power a blender if you're just like craving a smoothie, you know? <laughs> um, otherwise, with all of your seats folded um, flat back here, you will get up to 80 cubic feet, 82 cubic feet of space. So much room back here. Um, and then not a ton of room underneath here. Um, this is just kind of a great little storage spot for all of the little charging doohickeys that you need because the battery's underneath that. I just want to show you um, the level of accessibility getting into the third row. You just press this button here. That same button is also right down here if you need to, and it folds the seat forward for you. And then you can, it scoots forward a little bit more past where um, you can scoot it to, to just climb right on in. That is a sufficient size opening for me to climb into. Granted, I'm not a very large person, but still very accessible for people my size and maybe your smaller children to access the third row. Um, a couple of things that are really cool back here. First, I just want to mention that you can fold your third row down from the passenger door as well. So this strap here on either side, you just pull it and it acts as the same way that the strap in the cargo space does to fold that down. This is also a great way for you to recline your third row. So this is how it is naturally in its like original position. And if you just give it a little tug and a little push, you can recline and chill out back here. Some other features that you get in the third row include like LED lighting back here. You also have third row air vents. You also get USB-C charging and some cup holders and like other really random small little storage compartments. And then last and potentially most important, let's talk about leg room because I'm about to shut the internet down on this. It is not bad. Right now, this front seat, the second row, is scooted as far forward as it can, allowing plenty of leg room for whoever's sitting in your second row. My legs are extended and my knees are nowhere close to the back of that seat. So, this is so comfortable. This would be great for a really long road trip if you're taking your car up to Tahoe or down to LA. Whoever's riding in the third row would be perfectly comfortable. You've got somewhere to keep your drink and charge your phone and just stay occupied back here. Now, you can get up to 30 inches of leg room um, in this third row. I will say if your second row has to be scooted all the way back, not gonna have a good time, but there is plenty of leg room in that second row to scoot the seat forward and have a very comfortable drive. And I'm just gonna say it, that's like a huge selling point against the Model X. Um, that first off, this is a standard third row, not an optional. You don't have to pay an extra $3,500 to have it back here. Um, and you just get so much comfortable leg room. <laughs> so loving that for Kia. Now let's talk about second row leg room. You'll get up to almost 43 inches of leg room in this row. So this is currently with the second row um, scooted all the way far forward, as far as it can go. As you can see, I've got ample amounts of leg room here. I could even like <laughs> fully straighten my short little legs back here. And then um, if you don't have anybody sitting in that third row, you could easily just scoot it all the way back and like really extend or comfortably fit somebody significantly taller than myself, even with um, your headroom here as well. So, there, okay. Um, these also um, recline quite a bit. <laughs> That's funny, quite a bit. <laughs> okay, some other second row features that you have um, are, you got your cup holders right here, and then you've got two more cup holders right here, and the seats are like this nice um, Syntec faux leather, super smooth and soft. 
I also love that we have our own climate controls back here for the second row, so you can control your AC on your own. You got your little vents right here. Also, this fixed panoramic um, moonroof right here is also great for the second and third row people. Just gives you the feeling of even like more open space. And there's a really interesting storage spot. Um, and there isn't really much of a center console, but there's like a center console for the second row. <laughs> so like down in there is like a big, just like huge storage space. Uh, maybe you put your tablet in there and if you like tuck it away far enough, it's like concealed and nobody's gonna think to like, it's like a secret hiding spot in a way. Um, Interesting. I would rather it just be a center console, but you got it. There's like a little pocket right here as well too. Um, and you've got like your little back seat pockets. You also have two USB-C charging ports, um, one on either seat. And then um, you can also can control the second, the passenger seat here. So I can access my little button right here to move the seat back, which is great if you are maybe like um, a rideshare driver and want to have your uh, guests in your back seat right here be able to have a little bit more room. Sitting in the driver's seat of the wind all wheel drive trim makes me feel like I'm sitting in like a fully loaded car right now. So there's so many features. My favorite thing about the EV9 is that it comes standard with heated and ventilated seats, which this is now officially the second car that I've ever sat in that came standard with ventilated seats, so already big fan. Um, all those controls are right here on your door. Um, also, with the wind all-wheel drive, you will have a heated steering wheel as well. That's also located next to those controls for your seats. I'm also loving the shape of the steering wheel. It's like really comfortable, soft touch, faux leather right there with all of your um, controls easy to access, including the driver assist system. Some of them can be shut off and controlled from your steering wheel, which I love because the easiest um, way to turn off any driver assist system the better. <laughs> uh, you also have your drive modes that you can access here on your steering wheel. Um, so you're going to get eco, normal, sport, and a customized drive. And then the all-wheel drive trims are going to gain a fifth snow mode as well. And then all of that is controlled uh, or displayed in your um, like huge control panel right here. So um, you have up to like 29 inches or something crazy of display. So you've got like your digital gauge cluster right here, um, totally customizable. And then in the middle is, whoop, <laughs> and then in the middle is your climate controls, which is kind of like a funny little screen. And it's also like not located in the best spot. As you can see, I literally just hit my windshield wipers trying to get to it but you can fix that. There's just a little button in the upper right corner and you just touch it and it expands all of your climate controls out to the rest of your screen. And then those can be accessed from all of these little buttons here that shift up and down. So you can change your temperature for each side of the car and control your fan speed. Also totally accessible within your infotainment system here as well. Um, everything here is pretty standard for Kia, like just um, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, totally standard. You also have wireless charging right down here as well. And then moving on down, we've got um, some charging down here and connectivity, USB-C only right there. Um, and then, uh, oh, you know what? Before I get like even more this way, I just wanna say, the way that you turn this car on, it is a push to start, but it's like, as you may have noticed, is not like here. There's two ways in a way. So one is a fingerprint control right here. So you can um, scan your fingerprint to set it up. I cannot because I do not own this vehicle. Um, or there's a funny little button right here that at first, like there, it's literally a power symbol and it just says EV. Um, that was like not that intuitive for me, which is almost embarrassing to admit. And I was like, what's that button? turns it on <laughs> anyways okay 
moving on down through here. So you've got your cup holders and this funny little pocket right here, which could be used to store like your passenger cell phone potentially, um, or like a pen or something else funny. Um, you also have like your hill descent control and your auto hold for when you come to like a park um, or a stoplight. You can also see um, all of your uh, backup cameras this way as well. Um, there is a small storage compartment down here um, that you can use for smaller items. And then there's not much, like I mentioned in the second row, it's not really a center console here. It's, it is, they're small. Like, I, I don't know what, you could put some loose change in there, I suppose. Quite small. Um, other than that, like the seats are so comfortable and oh, oh, these slide, loving that for the EV9 as well. Um, and the wind trim, um, the wind all wheel drive, you will get eight speakers. So it sounds decent enough for a car this size. And the moonroof right here, this power moonroof is great. This is also a standard feature on the wind all wheel drive trim. It's really exciting to see a larger variety of EVs hit the mainstream market and especially at a more accessible price point. So let us know what you think below in the comments of the new Kia EV9. Bye!